Hey guys, what's up? My name is Maddox. Today I'm going to explain you my track The Underground, which has been released on Revealed Recordings and been played by Hardwell on EDC Las Vegas and other shows. Um, so let's dive into the project. I will play it for you first. I just loaded the bounced MP3 right now because of my the CPU. Um, so here we go. That's the track. Uh, as you heard, it starts with some side trance influences, goes into some hardstyle vibe break, hardstyle drop, and in the end, trap. Um, so first of all, I want to explain a little bit how I work in FL Studio, the organization, quickly, so you guys can understand it. Um, the playlist, I always put kick on top, uh, bass line, then the synths, and I put everything that has an automation clip, I put it right under. So, for example, the pitch bands of the leads are just right below the lead itself. This way, for me, I always know where everything is. And another thing I do, I try to combine all the drop sounds. So that's this whole part. And do the break separately. So here's the break. And it m this makes it really easy to copy paste parts later on. And you don't, you can just select the whole break, copy paste, and that's it. Um, then in the mixer, I used to uh, place sound sounds just everywhere. And it's really annoying of if after like three months you go back to a project and you don't know where everything is. So at one point I decided to organize my mixer as well. Um, first, I have three FX 
buses and there's a lot of uh, noise and like effects going in there. The first one is just without any uh, processing. The second one goes to a send with a huge reverb. Third one has an LFO tool that auto pens it, so it pens it quite fast. And this way I can use a lot of effects and put them directly uh, in the correct bus. Then in red, all my drums. Uh, in blue, bass lines, only for the drop. Here, uh, leads for the drop. This is all the other drop sounds. And the cool thing is on this bus, for example, I have just one sidechain and all the sounds are routed through that. So it's automatically sidechained all the same. These are the break sounds. And then I have uh, separate FX sounds that need processing differently than the buses you saw in the, in the beginning. And then this is uh, just some extra the vocals. So now that we've done that, uh, let's start with the intro. So the intro starts with a kick that's just got it really short. Uh, you see a small fade here. You put it by de-clicking mode on generic and just I just draw the kick to make it short. And this way you have the intro kick already. Uh, we have a bass line over here. And actually I bounced it out because the bass line, um, it wasn't consistent. Like sometimes you have a little bit of phasing and stuff. So I bounced this whole part looked for the perfect sub and just copy pasted that all over and made one small bar out of it. So now my sub is always perfect. And some processing that was originally, it's just one EQ. I use a Fat Filter Pro Q2 a lot um, because of the workflow. It's for me, it's the fastest working EQ and it sounds really good as well. So over here you see I boost the root note frequency um, actually by 9.9 .9 decibels which is a lot and I know a lot of guys say don't boost in the low end too much can get phasing issues well for me if it works it's fine and I tend to do it a lot. Also I cut out some of the high ends because there are more subs layered on top later on the first one starts here. Let me open it. So this is a mid mid layer sub. And as you can see here, I cut out the low end so it doesn't interfere with the real sub. I use a camel crusher plugin I use a lot, uh, mainly for its distortion and compressor. And it's just a really fast and easy tool, and I really like the sound of the distortion. Um, transient designer and stuff. I'll explain later because this is the Psy uh, baseline. So we have some other sounds, uh, cashmere claps, just to make create the ambience. Clap sample doesn't even have any processing on top of it. A downlifter over here. We add a ride. Um, for some of my drums, I really like to use the fruity stereo shaper. Uh, and I just use this delay button to delay the left or right signal. And this way you get a really, really wide sound, which uh, yeah, makes your tracks track so much more interesting and your mix a lot better if you place the sounds right. So some of the sounds delay the left channel, some the right channel. Sometimes just use panning or a different stereo plugin. Uh, but for drums, this one is perfect for me. Um, this is a small fill from the drop. I'll explain later. This is step from Kashmir. Um, I think it's, yeah. So as you can see, I cut out a lot of the low end because I didn't need it. And I used the stereo shaper as well to make it really wide step. 
And on top of that is a reverb. Um, this is one of my favorite reverbs for big room sounds. It's by Art Arts Acoustic. And as you can see here, it's five seconds, pretty long. And I use this the same reverb on a lot of uh, like a, a lot of buses, so it glues together really nice. If you use different reverb for every single sound, it's gonna start a bit weird. And now everything is in the same space. And this is sidechain. So also some rises starting, and that's basically the intro. Just. This is a saw build up riser, and I just automated the pitch up. Nothing really special. Um, the vocal you hear is from an Indian pack. So, this is the sample. I pitched it in the right key here and then just cut one part and you can hear some kind of tremolo effect on top of it. So I used Camel Crusher again to give it some distortion. Uh, Micro Shift is a pretty cool uh, chorus effect, it makes the sound really wide and it shifts small frequencies, so yeah, try it out, it's pretty cool. Glitch 2, I use it for the tape stop, which you hear every eight bars. And then we have this LFO tool, which gives the gated effect. And I try to keep, like, the intro needs to move already, so that's why I'm using all this, also this LFO tool as a gate. Um, on top of that is Decimord, it's a Bitcrusher plugin, oh, but actually it's not doing, I disabled it, apparently. And as you can see again, the same, the same reverb on that. Okay, so, from here we go, like, directly in the build. Um, and the main thing from the build is, uh, the vocal, which is all the way down here. And later on, I will show you the vocal project. Right now, this is just processed in a different project. I'll show it later. The underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up. And actually, it's my own voice. I recorded it and tried. We burn it up. Just make it live. I edited it there as a placeholder, but in the end, I used it in the real track. We rave the shit, we burn it up. We make it live. We burn it up. 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 So that's the main thing of the new of of of, th of the first uh, build up. Um, then I have this. Arp. No. We rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit the underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit the underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit the underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit, we burn it up, 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 we make it lit the underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit the underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit the underground, we rave the shit. It's not playing. Underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up. Underground, we rave the shit, we burn it Okay, whatever, it's uh, acid base. Apparently, it hasn't loaded correctly. Um, so, I immediately start with some risers and claps um, to get the drive going. Um, and the claps, snares, rises together with the vocal is basically a complete build-up. Then over here you see a few uh, master automations. So this one is a filter. It's a high-pass filter, so it cuts, it cuts out the low end. This is a reverb on the master um, to give it more space. And this filter is cutting out 
the high end. And that way, when the drop hits, everything comes back and uh, it makes it more powerful. The drop is harder. And as you can hear, the, the, the track is in triplets. So in the intro, I didn't use any percussion because uh, when you play the track live, it's difficult to mix a triplet track into a normal uh, four to the floor track. And that's why I only like start with the triplet elements, elements right when the build-up starts. So when you're done playing the previous track. And this way you can easily mix it live. Um, so that's why over only over here the, the snares start in triplets. I just pitched it with the FL Studios built-in pitch over here. Um, and another snare. And some sweeps. Just this is just noise stuff. And then there's a pretty special pre drop drop. I was inspired by uh, like big trance tracks that have these huge synths just before the drop. So over here it goes silent. Um, so we have this over here. This is the main one. And it's Avenger, a new synth from Vengeance, which I really like. It's You can do so much stuff with it. It's crazy, so you guys should check it out. And it's basically just a super saw, um, three octaves on top of each other playing this melody. Oh, now this one is disabled. Um, it has a lot of reverb, but as you can see here, right when the drop hits, I get all the volume goes down. So this means the reverb, reverb doesn't continue in the drop and makes your track more clean. Um, this one here is a reversed uh, note to really suck you into this, this part. So how I make these, um, I always have this bus called Huge Verb at the end uh, as, as, a, as a send. And this is 100% wet, eight second uh, large reverb. And usually I just like grab a part, put it here, get it quickly, um, set the marker here, and then So this is the sound you want. I send it to the bus. Click record. Click play. And there you have it already. And you can just get this. And if you press Alt left, you reverse the sample. Control N, you normalize it. Control F. And there you have your reverse sample already. It's really quickly. And with this button, you can just draw it in. And that's it. I just have to make sure I disable the. So unsend it, and that's it. Okay, so the first drop. the kick it's a pretty punchy kick I'm not sure where it's from but probably I have a collection of kicks I made myself uh, kicks from other tracks and also use like cashmere vengeance sometimes and on top of the kick is an EQ so over here 
I was like trying to get a bit more punch in the kick. This was an annoying peak and it needed some more uh, click effect to cut through the mix. So that's why I boost the high end. And also here the Trans X multi stereo from Waves. Um, what it does, it gets transient on specific bands you select. So over here, these two higher bands from 500 Hertz and up um, are boosting a little bit every time the kick hits. So you get a bit more click. If I disable it, and I'll put it on. I'm not sure if you can hear it there. This is the EQ. So that's the kick. Then we have the real sub. Which is these two EQs. Oh, this one is disabled. This EQ, which I showed you. And the sidechain is, of course, really, really important for this one. At home, I use a sub pack. And it's, it's look it up. It's a tool you place in the back of your chair. And you can actually feel the bass, but also feel the sidechain. So if you uh, sidechain too, he too heavy, you feel a gap of silence. If you do not sidechain at all, you feel a lot of rumble and stuff going on in the low end that doesn't belong there. And with this tool, I can really easily get my sidechain curve perfectly right. So it glues together and feels as just one big kick. Um, so then on top of that, we have these mid bases. So the first one, is this Melbourne kind of triplet bass. And this is what I showed you, I used it in intro, it cut out the low end. Use a camel crusher, just for a bit of compression. This is a transient designer, to give it a bit more attack. Because I really want to punch, let it punch through. And then another EQ. And often I use multiple EQs on one channel, it's because it's really difficult like to get an EQ right the first time it's a uh, like the making a whole track is taking time and you keep on changing things like the sound is never done I always go back change it a bit more and that's why I use a new EQ because I don't don't want to uh, uh, mess with the mess with the old one and then on top of that you have this this bass, it's a really simple two voices detuned saw from Silent and here as well, cut out the low end, a little bit of distortion and then one more EQ and this one is pretty wide because of the two voices in Silent so it makes your bass sound a bit more wide and but this the real sub, like the low bass is still mono So that's the sub for this part. So the leads are uh, quite simple in this one. It's a voice lead from Avenger. And let me show you. This is the voice without any effects. So what I'm using is Novel to Character. Um, it's a saturation plugin, uh, which sounds pretty good, and it's really easy to use. Um, EQ. Uh, so for my EQs, it's it, of course it's different for each sound where you EQ, and you really have to listen to the sound, and it's also difficult for me to explain now. But usually. Um, Problem areas are between 200 and 400 hertz. Uh, for leads, it's like between 400 and 6, 7, 800 that I used to dip a bit. And usually, 1 to 5k, you can boost a little bit. Of course, here it's different. I think there were a little bit too much high, ne high frequencies here, so that's why I cut it out. Um, I use the imager from Isotope, which is really cool because it keeps your mono signal, signal intact, so you can still uh, play the track f perfectly fine on mono. 
um, and it sounds really wide. And I put the stereo wise on with so it delayed a bit and then these bands over here I put wide. And of course Camel, camel Crusher again. And the same reverb. And then the other lead is a synth one. It's a really simple synth lead. And actually it has kind of the same same processing on there. Um, so Saturn is really nice because you can I use sometimes use it as a little bit of EQ you make these bands and just push the high end and push this mid band over here a bit. And then um, it saturates those parts more than the other parts. This is the Vester, um, which is a distortion plugin as well. The Mansion Expander is really nice. It's a bathroom, well, reverb, you can name it a reverb, I think. It gives the bathroom effect. And it makes your sounds wider as well. Um, so these two sounds are linked to this, this pitch band. And it's a trick a lot of guys on F working in FL I think don't know because both these pitches are going to the same uh, same pitch band automation. So how you do it? Like for the first sound, you just make it. Uh, you automate the pitch, and then the second sound, you right click, go link to controller, and over here you see internal controllers, and you see everything you have. So you select the automation clip you want to link it to. You uncheck remove conflicts, accept, and that's it. Now it's linked. Both these synths are linked to one automation clip. And it's especially handy or useful when you have like six synths that need to pitch at the same time. You can all link them to one automation clip and it makes it so much easier. And also, uh, in the end, it's much easier on your eyes. The project doesn't look that big. Okay, so the next. There's just some noise. So this noise is being panned from the left to the right, really fast. And this is just plain noise, a bit side-chained. And a bit more really high noise. And all together, really gives that ambience and because of the panning it sounds the track sounds a bit wider as well so a small drum fill uh, in triplets of course I will put the grid like now you see it's correct We go back to the big fill with the reverse stuff. And then the second part just adds a lot of percussion. Um, you have triplet toms. Um, this transient designer is cool because it's multiband, so you can set a split frequency. And over here, you see like the low end is just boosted by 39%, the high end by almost 70%. Um, it's good if you don't want to boost the low end too much, just a click, for example. Then the right claps. This is a small click. Small clap loop also going in the groove and bending from left to right again.
Over here also the steps. With a reversed step, uh, like I showed you before. They glide you into the step and it feels way more natural that way. Okay, I think that's basically it. The rises are there and then we go into the breakdown. So if you guys noticed, there's a tempo change in the track. The first part is 140 BPM and over here it switches immediately to 150 BPM to prepare for the hardstyle drop, the second drop. Um, because I don't didn't want to uh, let the people like really feel the track change its tempo. I just have only like ambient noise and long chords over here, so you don't really recognize it, and still it's changed for the second drop. So, also it switches from triplets to normal here. Um, Some synths are hanging. So I start with some pads, for example, this vocal pad. Basically, I first write a bass line and then start to make chords out of it. And this one also has a small melody on top to keep the whole thing moving. And the synth I used is Omnisphere, I think. It's loading. Yeah. Omnisphere is a really cool organic sound. So here in human voices, I used the uh, choir. I don't know how to pronounce it in English. <laughs> On top of that, another one with just, just the chord. We have the bass line, of course. And then... The melody comes in. I use the main leads, but filtered, as you can see here. And also this plug. Nothing really special happening here. So this is a pre-drop, pre, like interesting fill. I use a lot. Uh, it's made by Effector, FL Studio plugin. So this is what it looks like. And if you put it on Vox mode and uh, do some settings, you get this focal kind of effect. And also there's uh, automation already happening in LFO internal with the X mod and I mod, Y mod. Um, this makes it have this sound. And it just enable and disable the effect uh, with this automation, uh, automation clip. And that's it. And then also the claps fade in here and here they're completely open and the bass changes to one that follows the notes. So bass on Nexus. Again you can see it pretty hectic EQ and um, I think you don't have to be afraid to EQ a lot of stuff uh, in the end it's about how it sounds and these are some super songs I think they are from Avenger and uh, Nexus you see I layered four of them on top of each other in different buses so we can EQ them different. Sometimes they have uh, too much 
uh, low mid, sometimes have too much high end. It's a completely different super saw, um, but together they work really well. And then we have the total mix bus. So all these three channels go to this one. And there's a final EQ, a little bit of distortion, and the one reverb. So all these superstars are without any reverb, only on the bus there's the reverb, um, which lets them glue together really well. And here, um, because it's a hard style valve, I used a lot of pitch bend on the lead. So this note actually starts at one octave lower and pitches up really, really fast. And you get this. You get that effect, uh, typical for hard style. And also you see a lot of pitch downs at the end of the notes. So from there we go into the second build, you see a lot of rises and effects and the main part is the vocal again, I'll show it in the other project soon. So the build up is really hectic for my CPU because everything is pitching including the super saws over here. Um, let me check, this just rises, super stars, the pre dop already comes in. And as you notice, everything is changed to just a normal beat instead of triplet. Um, so I think the build up is kind of the same as the first one. So a trick I use is layer some, just a kick drum, but really short and a bit softer than usual um, in your buildup, like below your snare. Gives it a lot more punch and on festivals it really works because you still have a little bit of low end in your buildup. And also I introduced the hardstyle part a little bit already so you get this drive for the second volume it's actually not that loud in volume but it really works and here's the the leads slowly mixing in and fading out with the reverb So I think it's time for the second drop. So first the kick. Um, I used this sample. And I, as you can see here, I boosted a lot of the, the, the frequencies in the, in the kick to give it more uh, low end and a bit more of the hard style and drive. I'm not sure if you can hear the difference. And then um, I felt it needed a bit more drive. So the second part is quite interesting and we have this offbeat offbeat hard saw uh, kick and basically it's just really heavy heavy side chain so you only get this last part and check what I used cut out some of the low end because that's already in the normal kick so you can see it only has the, the mid bass, like one octave higher than the root note. And together, this really worked well. Oh. To get the drive for the track right. 
So then we have the same leads because uh, the tempo changed, the whole the whole like uh, drop changed, but the leads I try to keep kept them the same. Only a slightly different melody, but the pitch band does exactly the same. So it still feels like the same track. Same noise is on there. Here we have a small screech sound. And I put a, a really long reverb, and it's the reverb is really, really loud. Um, so it continues in the track, and of course, it's sidechain. I want to like uh, put it in the background, like the reverb stuff. Um, we actually have the same kind of fills, but changed from triplets to this. Um, let me think, I think that's basically it. So we can go to the track part. Actually, it was just to, to try it because I felt the track was a little bit short. Um, so I quickly put uh, some 808s there. So again, kind of the same leads, same pitch, but just again a difference in notes to make it the trap kind of vibe. Um, the 808 trap beat is over here. And if we Just a simple hired loop. Actually, I was making this really quickly to see if it works, um, and it did. One thing that's funny, I put the hard saw, hard saw kick on top. And as you can see, without the low end, to not interfere. But uh, for me, this worked really well because now I connected the two parts a bit more together. Same screech. Come on! A small uh, vocal. So, yeah, I think that's the trap part as well. So, this fill. From Avenger, but if I dis disable the uh, effects, you can hear the original. It's basically a saw, and as you can see here, I used Effector again with the vocal effect, which makes it this talking uh, effect you get. All right, then it's the outro. Let me go back to the um, intro vibe, but just with hard style kick, it stays on 150 BPM. Um, and the vocal from the intro gets introduced again. I have a, a riser going down which gives a cool effect like the track is done ok 
Okay, so that's basically this track. Um, I thought of one funny th of like cool thing in FL um, that a lot of people not u don't use. Uh, for example, when I'm looking for claps, um, so let me show you this. Like here, you have a lot of clap samples. For example, when I want to try this clap, and you put it in. Let's disable this one quickly. So now that this is playing, and usually you would play it with the track. Now a cool function is, if you go to your browser and click middle mouse button, so you click on the scroll wheel, you replace all these claps. So now they replace all at the same time. And especially for drums, it's so useful because I just put one clap there and start switching up and you instantly hear which one works with your track because obviously you can play the track. So when I do it with this, this one. It changes the, all the claps in the whole project. Really useful function. Okay, so let's open the vocal project. Okay, so here we have the vocal project. As I told you, um, it's my own voice. I recorded it in my home studio, and let me. Underground, we rave the shit. We put. Underground, we rave the shit. Okay, let me play it without effects. Underground, we rave the shit. We burn it up. Make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit. We. And this is actually pitched down by two. So now. The underground we rave the shit we, we burn have it my up. own we voice sounding the really shitty we rave the shit we burn it under so what I did I pitched it down by two to get a deeper voice and then I will enable the effects one by one so first auto tune the underground we rave the shit we burn it up we make it lit the underground we rave the shit we burn it up we make it um, I tried to do a lot with manipulator, but in the end, it's even it's actually disabled. I just used the pitch function, so that's this is a vocal compressor. Underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we From make waves. it lit. The underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make uh, it lit. The underground, uh, we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit. We burn it up, tool. we burn it up, we burn. It. So you have a deesser, uh, compressor. Saturation. Underground, we rave the shit. We burn it up. We make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit. And the limiter, shit. and even more. And it's also good. they have pretty good presets in here. This can use as a starting shit. point and then edit your stuff. We make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit. We burn it up. We make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit. We burn it up. We make it lit. Like the no low end was really shitty, so I could have all up. We make it lit. And boosted a lot of the high frequencies. Now, Camel Crusher for the distortion. Underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up. We make now it gets really distorted, but like the shit, in the track, it, it works really it well. The we rave the so shit, the compressor we burn is on fat mode, which gives it fat vibe and the uh, tube and mech all both on. Another de-esser because of the like, the S uh, sounds were really heavy. Underground, we rave the shit, we burn it you up. You can see we here what it the out. We rave the shit, we burn it up. We make it lit. Another EQ, because Camel Crusher often adds rumble on the low end, so I cut it out. We rave the shit, we burn it up. We make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit, imager to make it stereo. Underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up. We make it lit. The underground, we rave the shit, we burn it up. We make it lit. We burn it up. We burn it up. We burn We'll go back. This was the original the sound. The ground we rave the shit. We burn it up. We make it lit. The underground we rave the shit. We burn it up. We and make it lit. The underground we rave the shit. We burn it up. The underground we rave the shit. We burn it right. up. We burn it up. We burn. It's good at and pitched over here. And this part is for the second. The underground we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit. The Same underground we rave the shit, we burn recording. it up, we make it lit. The underground we rave the shit, we burn it up, we make it lit. The underground we rave the shit, we burn it up. And that's basically the vocal. I bounced this and used it in the track. 
so that's basically it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today.